to Unsightly Opinions. My name's Tamara. Today, we are going to be talking about the white cane. Who should use it, when you should consider using it, how to get comfortable using it, and some different cane options for people who are looking to get into using a white cane. This video suggestion comes from Marissa, thank you for an excellent video suggestion, who wanted to know when to start using a white cane and how to get comfortable using a white cane around other people. As always with these kinds of videos, these are my thoughts and mine alone, so I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. First off, who should use a white cane? Anyone with any kind of vision loss can use a white cane. You don't need to have a very specific visual acuity of 20 over 200 or 20 over 800. You don't need to have X visual condition or Y visual condition or be blind in this circumstance. If you feel that a white cane is going to benefit you, if you feel that a white cane is going to give you some confidence, some independence, or give you information about your surroundings to help keep you safe or oriented, you should absolutely consider starting to use a white cane. All that being said, it is entirely a personal decision. Typically, the worse your vision becomes, the more likely it is you're going to need to depend on using a white cane for mobility reasons. But there aren't just mobility canes. There's canes for identification purposes as well, just to let people around you know that you have a visual impairment so you might need to do things differently. That does not mean that you need to use the white cane in the same way as other canes. Usually, identification canes are shorter, are only used in specific circumstances, are not swept back and forth, and are simply held in front of you. And if you choose to use a white cane, you don't need to use it all the time unless you feel that that's important to you. Some people might feel more comfortable using a white cane when they have less vision outdoors. Somebody might only choose to use their cane in unfamiliar territory, like when going to the mall or a movie theater. Some people may choose to use a white cane in specific lighting circumstances. Whatever your reasoning is, you can always choose to pull out your white cane and use it. I would encourage you to try it out, see if it helps, see if it doesn't. And if it doesn't, great, don't use it. And if it does give you some independence or mobility or information that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, great, use it. When I started using my cane full-time for mobility reasons, I can tell you I was incredibly self-conscious about it. I didn't want to use it. I didn't want to get comments from people. I was concerned about standing out. I was worried about being othered. It really felt foreign to me. Now being 20 years into that journey, it feels like an extension of my arm. I wouldn't go anywhere else without it. Because it's something new, because it's something that you're not used to doing, because everybody has these beliefs about what a white cane is going to mean or what other people are going to think, it can really be challenging to want to use your white cane. When I started out, I didn't use it absolutely everywhere. I started out by using it in foreign environments where I really didn't know my way around. Places that I'd been a hundred times, I didn't need to use my white cane because I knew my way around, I didn't have to see to be able to get around safely. So long as other people didn't move things on me, I was going to be okay. But if I went somewhere new, like an amusement park or a movie theater or somewhere where I wasn't familiar with the layout, a white cane was definitely something that I needed. I had significant vision loss sometime around the age of nine and 11. It's hard to pinpoint exactly when that started. It became fairly obvious fairly quickly to me and to those around me that I was going to need to start using a white cane full-time for safety reasons. I was getting hurt doing things that I was able to do safely before with my small amount of remaining vision. I was running into things, I was falling down stairs, I was tripping, I was constantly cut and bruised. Even to me, even though I was uncomfortable, I understood the importance, I understood the benefits, of having something warn me before I was going to trip into something or fall down a set of stairs. There were several incidents in particular, one of which I've told in my other video talking about my worst blind accidents at the beginning of grade five, where I not only ran into a pole, I fell down a set of stairs, I tripped in a crack on the sidewalk, I got incredibly bloodied and beat up just trying to make it around a school that I'd been going to for five years. That was a pretty good indication that my remaining vision and my tools and skills that I was using to navigate weren't working very well anymore. So the catalyst for me starting to use my white cane was actually when I moved schools in grade six. 
I was in a new environment. There was another blind person in the school, so it wasn't something that was new or unusual to the students. They'd all seen that before. But I can understand the difficulty wanting to use it around people. I was nervous to start using it around my family because I wasn't sure what they'd think. I was nervous to start using it around my friends because I wasn't sure what they'd think. Overall, I didn't get any comments that I thought I was going to get about using my white cane. I'd get the odd question from somebody I knew saying, oh, I didn't know you used a white cane, why are you using that now? And I'd just say, I feel a little bit more confident using it because it tells me more about my environment. Even though I'm not completely blind, it really helps me out so I don't hurt myself. And that's usually the end of the conversation. All that being said, I was still uncomfortable being a status symbol for something that was the universal symbol for blindness. So when I found out you could customize your canes and you could get custom colors, that was something that really spoke to me on an emotional level. And I know this is a very contentious topic in the blind community as to whether people should use colored canes or not. I am a firm believer that if you are uncomfortable with something, but you're gonna be comfortable with something else that serves the same purpose, absolutely use it. So for me, I got canes in all kinds of different colors. I've got a cane in black, I've got a cane in purple. Before I lost all the things I owned, I had canes in pink and green, and I could match my cane to my outfit. So it made it feel more like an accessory rather than something that I needed. Just like somebody who uses a mobility cane for help with balance or walking can customize their canes, I couldn't see why we couldn't do the same for ours. Using the purple cane, for me, was an excellent excuse to try and make it more comfortable for me. I did get more comments from people asking about it or what it was for, but that didn't bother me as much because people weren't making assumptions about me. It's important to recognize your own insecurities about using a white cane, but it's also important to try and find ways to maximize your safety and maximize your independence. So if using a colored cane is gonna get you there more than a white cane, why not? There are many circumstances when a white cane is absolutely going to be what you need to use. If you need to be recognized as someone with a visual impairment, you should absolutely be using the standard universal symbol, white cane, possible red tip, and that way you're more likely to get the assistance you need for your specific disability. But for me in the day-to-day, -day, I don't typically need help. It doesn't matter to me whether I'm using the universal symbol for blindness or whether I'm using something that's pink or purple or green or yellow or orange because they both serve the exact same function of helping my mobility. The next question people have is, where do I get a white cane and how do I get training to use my white cane? First off, where you get a white cane is entirely up to you. Many organizations and services will provide free white canes. I'm fairly sure that the RNIB gives away free canes. I'm fairly certain that the CNIB still does one free white cane for your first white cane. I don't know about the resources in the States as well because I am a Canadian, but you can absolutely purchase a white cane on Amazon. My go-to is always Ambutech for really high quality canes. I get the graphite cane because it doesn't stick together and I find it really Really light and durable. And then the next question is going to be about tips. Tips are a very personal decision on your cane. There's all kinds of different options from wheels to balls to static to pencil tips and each one is going to feel differently to every person. I personally choose to use either a rollerball tip or just a regular old marshmallow roller tip because I find they go over cracks much easier but try out several things, try and go into a local blind organization and find something that suits your particular needs. In terms of getting training, I would check in with your local organization for the blind, your local disability rehabilitation center. They're going to be able to direct you to get orientation and mobility training. What orientation and mobility training does is it gives you the framework to know how to navigate safely in your environment. And it's not all about cane training. They can help you with all kinds of different tips and tricks to use your ears, to use your remaining vision with magnifiers, monoculars, binoculars, 
to help see things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see and learn how to navigate your environment safely. I know there is typically a very long wait list. It can be very difficult to access services. So if you do want to check it out, I have another video talking about the basics of how to use a white cane and I will link it in a card above and in the description down below. That's not a shameless self promo. I know it's something that a lot of people have trouble accessing. So that's why I made that video. At least with that video, it can give you the very basic tips and tricks of how to start using a white cane, a couple of the different techniques, how to use it in different circumstances, but I would absolutely recommend that you get professional training to use it safely. And just a caveat here, I am not an orientation and mobility specialist. I'm just a very long time cane user who has had years and years and years of O&M training. If you have any other questions about canes or you have your own tips and tricks or your own stories of what made you decide to start using a white cane, please share them in the comments down below. It can be really helpful for people to hear many different stories, many different experiences, so it helps normalize their experience as well as mine. I love hearing your stories. If you have any other navigation and mobility tips and tricks, also leave those in the description down below. I love learning new things from you guys. If you like content like this, you can always support the channel by liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. But that's all I have for you today. I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.